Hello everyone! Welcome to the Astronomy Hub channel. In 2025, mark your calendars now for the spectacular night sky events that will take place, because many celestial events from meteor showers to eclipses and planetary alignments are waiting to be observed by stargazers. Let's take a look at which celestial events you can observe month by month. Night sky in January. 2025 will have a good start with the Quadrantids meteor shower on the night between January 3rd and 4th. In this meteor shower, if the weather conditions are favorable, you can observe up to 40 meteors per hour. The reason for the formation of the Quadrantids meteor shower is the burning of the remaining fragments of comet 2003-EH1 as it rapidly enters the atmosphere. Thanks to the early setting of the crescent moon, we will have a dark sky to better observe the meteor shower. You can observe the meteor shower spreading across the entire sky from the Boötes constellation. Our satellite moon will be in the first quarter on January 6th, full moon on January 13th, last quarter on January 21st, and new moon on January 29th. The full moon on January 13th is also called the wolf moon. This name was given by Indian tribes because it was attributed to wolves howling in winter. Don't forget to watch this full moon illuminating the whole night with its splendor. On January 10th, Venus will be at its greatest eastern elongation, 47.2 degrees from the sun, making it the best time to observe it. If you look at the western horizon just after sunset, you can immediately notice Venus with its splendid brightness. We recommend you not to miss this beautiful moment. On January 16th, Mars will be at its closest position to Earth, as it will be directly opposite the Sun. Since the face of Mars facing us will be fully illuminated, it will be the best opportunity of the year to observe it. We recommend that you observe Mars with a telescope as it will shine brightly all night long. Night Sky in February We will start with a beautiful conjunction in the night sky of February. On February 1st, the crescent moon and Venus will be very close to each other. Just after sunset, you can see Venus just 5 degrees north of the moon. It is recommended to watch this conjunction with binoculars or a telescope. In February, the moon will be in the first quarter on February 5th, full moon on February 12th, last quarter on February 20th, and new moon on February 27th. One of the most magnificent celestial events of February is the snow moon, which will occur on February 12th. It is so named because of the heavy snowfall in February. Some tribes also call this full moon as the hunger moon because of the difficulty in finding food in winter. On the night between February 5th and February 6th, the moon in the first quarter phase will cover the Pleiades star cluster, also called Seven Sisters, and pass in front of it. This two hours long occultation will be witnessed by observers in the western part of North America. Undoubtedly, one of the most beautiful celestial events of February will be the Moon and Mars conjunction on February 9th in the constellation Gemini. You will be able to see Mars and the waxing gibbous Moon very close to each other. Mars will be just one degree below the Moon in the eastern direction. Don't forget to capture this beautiful moment. Night Sky in March In March, the Moon will be in the first quarter on March 6th, full Moon on March 14th last quarter on March 22nd and finally new moon on March 29th. On March 8th, Mercury will be at its greatest eastern elongation and will be 18.2 degrees from the Sun. Mercury is often difficult to observe because of its proximity to the Sun. There will be a good chance to observe it just after the Sun sets on the western horizon on this date. The full moon will occur on March 14th. The full moon in March is also called the full worm moon. This name was given because of the thawing of ice from the soil and the emergence of worms. But the most remarkable celestial event to be experienced on this date is the total lunar eclipse. The moon will pass through the Earth's shadow and turn a beautiful red color. Don't miss the spectacular blood moon visible from North America, Central America and South America. On March 20th, the March equinox, also called vernal equinox, will take place. This date marks the beginning of spring in the Northern Hemisphere and autumn in the Southern Hemisphere. Since the sun's rays will be at right angles to the equator, day and night will be almost equal in all parts of the world. Usually, after a lunar eclipse or solar eclipse, the opposite happens. After the lunar eclipse on March 14th, a partial solar eclipse will occur on March 29th. 
The moon is always in the new moon phase when solar eclipses occur. The eclipse will be visible in parts of Canada, Greenland, Northern Europe and Russia. While watching solar eclipses, you should always use a protective filter or glasses to protect your eye health. Night Sky in April The first striking celestial event of April will be the conjunction of the Moon and Jupiter on April 2nd. After the evening hours, you may notice Jupiter shining just north of the Moon. Our satellite Moon will be in the first quarter on April 4th, full Moon on April 12th, last quarter on April 20th and new Moon phase on April 27th. The Lyrids meteor shower will be best observed between the night of April 22nd to April 23rd. In this meteor shower, an average of 20 meteors per hour can be observed. The crescent moon will provide a good opportunity to watch the meteor shower. After midnight on April 22nd, don't forget to look around the constellation Lyra. The celestial body that adorns the morning hours of the April moon will undoubtedly be the planet Venus. On April 27th, about 90 minutes before sunrise, you can spot Venus over the western horizon with its glorious brightness. Venus, which will reach its highest brightness, will be accompanied by the planet Saturn in the immediate vicinity. Just half an hour before sunrise, you can witness the conjunction of Venus, Saturn and Mercury trio. Set your clocks early and don't miss this spectacular moment. Night sky in May. The moon will be in the first quarter on May 4th, Full moon on May 12th, last quarter on May 20th, and new moon on May 26th. The most interesting observation of May may be the route that the asteroid Vesta will follow in the sky. During May, Vesta will move between the constellations Libra and Virgo and will be visible even with the naked eye. Vesta will be in the opposition on May 2nd, and you may have the chance to observe it with the naked eye or a simple binocular in a dark place. On May 6th and 7th, the Eta Aquarius meteor shower, caused by the remnants of the famous Halley's Comet, will take place. It is better observed in the Southern Hemisphere, but you may still have the chance to observe up to 30 meteors per hour on average. Since the Moon will be in the waxing gibbous phase, it may be difficult to see some meteors, but with attention and patience, you can witness many meteor falls. On May 22nd, the conjunction of the Moon, Saturn and Venus is one of the other striking celestial events of this month. Approximately one hour before sunrise, you can spot Saturn and the magnificently bright Venus near the crescent moon on the eastern horizon. We recommend early birds not to miss the conjunction of this trio. Night sky in June. The moon will be in the first quarter on June 2nd, full moon on June 11th, last quarter on June 18th, and new moon on June 25th. This month's full moon is also called strawberry moon, rose moon or honey moon, as it is the time for the Indian tribes to harvest the ripening fruits. On June 25th, during the new moon phase, there will be no moon in the night sky, so it may be a good time for observing the night sky. At midnight on June 18th, the moon in the last quarter phase will get close to Saturn. You can easily spot Saturn south of the moon. June 21st will be the solstice. Since the sun's rays will come to the northern hemisphere at a steeper angle, the summer season will begin in this hemisphere, while the winter season will begin in the southern hemisphere. At the same time, this day will be the longest day in the northern hemisphere and the longest night in the southern hemisphere. On June 22nd, the moon and Venus will be in a close position. If you look at the eastern horizon before sunrise, you can see bright Venus and the crescent moon. Night sky in July. The moon will be in the first quarter on July 2nd, the full moon on July 10th, the last quarter on July 17th, and the new moon on July 24th. On July 4th, the planet Mercury will be at its greatest eastern elongation, making it the best time to observe this tiny planet. Since it is far from the sun, you should look for Mercury on the western horizon just after sunset. One of the events that adorn the night sky in July is the Delta Aquarius meteor shower that will take place on July 28th and 29th. Since the moon will be in the crescent phase on this date, it offers observers a good opportunity to watch the meteor shower. You may have the chance to observe better away from city lights. You can see an average of 20 meteor falls per hour around the constellation Aquarius. Night sky in August. The moon will be in the first quarter on August 1st, full moon on August 9th, last quarter on August 16th and new moon on August 23rd. The full moon in August is also called the Sturgeon Moon, 
named after the abundance of sturgeon caught in late summer. It is also known as the green corn or grain moon. One of the most famous celestial events of the summer and even of the whole year is a Perseid meteor shower on August 12th and 13th. Thanks to the favorable weather conditions resulting from the summer season in the Northern Hemisphere, watching the Perseides becomes quite enjoyable. An average of 60 meteors per hour will be observed. Although observing the meteor shower is partially affected by the moonlight, you will have a better chance to watch it after midnight. On August 19th, Mercury will be at its greatest western elongation. If you have the chance to get up early, you can see Mercury on the eastern horizon just before sunrise. You may need to look quite close to the horizon to see Mercury. Night sky in September. The moon will be in the full moon on September 7th, the last quarter on September 14th, the new moon on September 21st, and the first quarter on September 29th. The full moon in September is also called the corn moon or harvest moon and marks the beginning of autumn. The full moon on September 7th will also be accompanied by a total lunar eclipse. This total lunar eclipse will be visible over most of Asia, parts of East Africa, Eastern Europe and Central and Western parts of Australia. The moon will pass through the Earth's shadow and turn a rusty red color. Every lunar eclipse is preceded or followed by a solar eclipse. On September 21st, two weeks after the lunar eclipse, a partial solar eclipse will occur in New Zealand and Antarctica. As we mentioned before, when observing solar eclipses, you must use solar filters to protect your eye health and never look directly at the sun. On September 22nd, the equinox will occur and autumn will begin in the northern hemisphere while spring will begin in the southern hemisphere. Since the sun's rays will be at right angles to the equator, day and night will be almost equal everywhere on Earth. Night sky in October. At midnight on October 5th to 6th, when you look a little higher towards the south, you can observe the waxing gibbous moon and Saturn approaching each other. The moon will be in the full moon on October 7th, the last quarter on October 13th, the new moon on October 21st, and the first quarter on October 29th. The super moon on October 7th will be the first super moon of 2025. Since the moon will be in the full moon and closest to the Earth, it will appear larger and brighter. Don't miss this spectacular moonlit night. Although the Draconid's meteor shower will take place on the same evening, it will be very difficult to watch this meteor shower due to the full moon. On October 21st and 22nd, there will be the Orionid's meteor shower caused by the remnants of Halley's Comet in space. A moonless sky after midnight will make watching the Orionid's more enjoyable. You can observe an average of up to 20 meteorites per hour. Night sky in November. The moon will be in the full moon on November 5th last quarter on November 12th, new moon on November 20th, and first quarter on November 28th. The second supermoon of the year will take place at the full moon on November 5th. Don't miss this glorious night. On November 10th, after midnight, the moon and Jupiter will converge. You can see Jupiter just below the waning moon. You will need to raise your head a little to see this duo. On November 17th and 18th, the Leonid's meteor shower can be easily observed as the moon is in the crescent phase. During the Leonid's meteor shower, you can see an average of 15 meteor falls per hour. To see Leonid's, you need to look around the constellation Leo. Night sky in December. The last supermoon of the year will be seen during the full moon phase on December 4th. The moon will be in the last quarter on November 11th, new moon on November 19th, and first quarter on November 27th. On December 12th and 13th, one of the most wonderful celestial events of the year will take place, and we will begin to say goodbye to 2025. If the weather conditions are favorable, you can witness the splendor of the Geminids meteor shower. The crescent moon will provide you with dark skies, making it easier to watch this meteor shower. An average of 120 meteors per hour are expected to fall in the Geminids meteor shower. We recommend you not to miss this spectacular celestial event away from the city lights. Finally, the solstice will take place on December 21st, as the sun's rays will fall at right angles to the Tropic of Capricorn. The southern hemisphere will start to warm up more, which means that the summer season will begin in this hemisphere. On the contrary, the winter season will begin in the northern hemisphere. On this date, the southern hemisphere experiences the longest day and the northern hemisphere the longest night. These celestial events for 2025 are just a few of the many that will occur throughout the year. 
Whether you like meteor showers, lunar and solar eclipses, or just observing the planets and stars, there are celestial events for every astronomy lover and stargazer in 2025. For each month in 2025, we will share with you more detailed celestial events. If you don't want to miss the current celestial events, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to the channel. In 2025, wishing you a clear sky with plenty of stars.